Welcome. In today's lesson, we'll be discussing the why of programming, reviewing mnemonics, and having a discussion that relates to the following topics. Today, we're talking about functions. We're going to learn what a function is. We're going to learn the point of functions in programming in general, and then some of the syntax that's required to build a valid function. Also, we're going to talk about why we use DEF in Python to abbreviate a function. And then we're going to talk about calling a function. What does it mean to call a function? What's the syntax that's required to make that call? And how can we get back anything from our function? And finally, we're going to talk about the function's parameters. We're going to talk about what a parameter is, how that fits into the concept of variables, and the difference between saying parameters and arguments. And remember that unlike all other animals on Earth, elephants just can't jump. They don't have kneecaps. So our first mnemonic today is going to be a regular old gas pump that you use to fill up your car. And it's going to represent the concept of a function. Now the reason I chose a gas pump to represent this concept is because a function is a way to define one variable in terms of another. That's probably the way you learned it in math class. And in the same way, a gas pump is defining the variable of dollars in terms of the variables of gallons of gas. And even though in Python our variables have a lot more diversity, we can work with things like dictionaries and lists, it's really not that much different than just thinking about it as a regular old number, an integer or a float, some kind of quantity that you used in math class. So we'll try to build off of that mental scaffolding that you already have. Okay, so what's a function in Python programming terms? Well, it's a structure for containing a block of code. A lot of times I think of it as a Tupperware container, not unlike a variable, but bigger and can hold more logic. And once this contained block of code is executed, it can perform logic either on variables that are floating outside the scope of the function or on variables that are specifically passed in or even on its own variables that it creates at the time just to do the logic with. And another important aspect of a function is doing something with the quantity after the logic has been performed. So the variable can stay contained inside of the function, but it can also be passed back to the place where it was called from and put into a variable. Also, you can actually nest functions, an entire function, inside of just a single variable in Python because everything's an object. Okay, so I hear you asking, well, what's the point? Well, I'm glad you asked that because Functions are arguably the most important concept in all of computer science. And this is because they allow us to generalize these logical transformations so that we can use them over and over again. And also, putting functions together is kind of how you can think of programming as Legos. Functions, modules, these are the kind of things that bring the computer to life. They let us stand on the shoulders of giants. Because a lot of people have put a lot of energy into Python already. There's countless programmers that have generously already defined this logic at a lower level. Lower level functionality is summed up through functions, and then eventually through modules, and then imported into your code, so that you don't have to build all of this stuff from scratch. And just as a quick bonus thought, I think that open source programming is pretty amazing when you really think about it from like humanity conceptual point of view, because Everybody is contributing. Everybody is benefiting from the contribution. So you can take this right now, stand on these shoulders, and go ahead and just focus on building something new, some kind of innovative new use for the programming language. And if it's used by enough people, eventually it gets sort of backported, or people can take things off your GitHub. And we'll talk about all this towards the end of the course in Chapter 3, but it's really just cool to think about how powerful open source is and how effective it is. Okay, so what is the syntax that's required to build a valid function? Of course, in our next lesson, the how video will be showing actual definitions with a Jupyter Notebook, but basically we have a keyword. It's DEF, and it stands for define, for defining a function. Then we give it a unique function name. We use some parentheses, and in between those parentheses, we can add arguments. We put an ending colon. And then, of course, with Python, we use indentation to signify what's inside of that Tupperware container. And if we want to, we can return the output. And that's a keyword that we'll be looking at in the next lesson. And our next mnemonic is going to appeal to all you Doctor Who fans because it's the TARDIS. It is the phone booth slash spaceship that everybody knows and loves. And it represents the concept of calling. In our case, calling a function. And there's a couple reasons why I think this makes a great mnemonic. First off, a phone booth is a great place to make 
calls from. And the second thing is if you watch Doctor Who, you know that there is no limit to the size inside of the TARDIS. So it looks like a little phone booth, but you walk inside and it's huge. It's like 20 times bigger because it like warps space and time and gives you much more space than you would expect inside of that from looking at it from the outside. And in the same way, I think when we make a call in programming, we just need one line. We just need to mention the name of the function and the thing that we want to pass in but it goes into a huge, as long as we want function, do as much logic as we need, even call other functions and things like that inside of it, and then return an answer. So it's like a little phone booth where you just like go in and get something out, but maybe inside that phone booth, there's a whole lot more than you're seeing. And this is part of that abstraction we were talking about before. So in terms of Python specifically, what does it mean to call a function? Well, when we call a function, what we're asking is for the function to execute that logic that's stored inside of it. These can be in separate places. For example, at the top of our code, we can define the function and the logic, and then later we can actually call it. Optionally, we can pass in the argument that we want to use on the logic. Optionally, we can pass in an argument that we want the logic to be ran on down where we call the function. And the syntax that we need when we're calling a function is just the name of the function we have our open and closed parentheses, which is what we know where the parameters go, and then each one of our parameters separated by a comma. So now let's just quickly talk about how we can get changes back from our function. So we talked about earlier using a special keyword called return in our function. After our logic is computed, we want to send something back. And where does that go? Well, that goes into our call itself. So even though the call is kind of thought of as like dialing a phone number, it also is the place where you get something back. So if we put that on the other side of a variable with an assignment operator in between, so variable, assignment operator, and then call, it will call, it will do the logic, it will return something, and then it will be passed right into that variable, our shot glass mnemonic from earlier on. So pretty neat. It can hold so much stuff inside these variables, and we're starting to now see the power of really what variables can hold. And our next mnemonic is one of my favorite board games as a child, Hungry Hungry Hippos, and it represents the concept of a parameter. Now I like to think of this Hungry Hungry Hippos scenario for functions and variables because I can kind of imagine that like the hippos are functions and they sort of chomp on the marbles and the marbles are the variables. So we can have like all these variables running around our Python script and then we have these functions and the calling is like the head and the neck that like reach out and eat them up and then pass them into their stomachs. And then the stomach is like the inside of the function where it's actually like executing logic and changing the variables in some way. And then we don't really have the return, but you can imagine if hungry hip if like hungry hungry hippos like added a like a processed butt thing or something. But yeah, so I just like to think of that concept of variables and functions and kind of grabbing them and passing them in. Okay, so let's get some more details on a parameter. Now a parameter, when thinking of it in terms of a variable, can be potentially anything because a variable can be potentially any type. We have lots of basic ones, we have others that can be created, we can have customized ones, and that all depends on what the logic inside of the function is. Now normally they're going to stick to some basic things, but do be aware with how much versatility there is. So if you want to get technical, which you really don't have to, but I'm going to because I want to, parameters are the names of the variables accepted for input in the definition of a function. So we talked about having a variable, a comma, a variable, a comma. You can assign these and they can have names. So you can have like kind of pocket number one, pocket number two, and that would be technically what you would be referring to as the parameter. The argument would be the thing that's passed in through the parameter, but in reality, if someone's like, I got some parameters coming in, you should probably just forget it. But now you know. And our final mnemonic is going to be some wooden clogs. And they represent star args and star star quarks. Want to hear it again? Star args, star star quarks, wooden clogs. I just feel like that's the mnemonic. And the reason why it popped into my head is because... There's two shoes, clogs, you know, these wooden clogs that people dance weird in. And there's two types of these asterisk arguments, the star args and star star quargs. So I just think it works. You can imagine the stars being sort of etched into the wood, I think, on the side. And also because they're clogs, you can think of walking, right? And walking is a sequence. You can think left, right, left, right. And in the same way star args and star star quargs can be thought of as 
sequence-related arguments. And they can vary in length, just like we can walk in a variety of lengths, 10 steps, 50 steps, 2 steps, whatever you want. Length can vary. OK, so what's all this star args and star star quark stuff about? Well, you can think of them as arguments of varying lengths. And we talked about arguments being sort of similar to variables. But in this case, with the star system, it's more about a placeholder, kind of a template saying, we know that you're going to pass in some kind of argument, some kind of variable. And it's going to come in this position. So first pocket, second pocket, third pocket. We can say in the first pocket, we want this star args. And what we mean is you can bring in a list or a set or any kind of group type. And we're not going to check how long the group is. So we could say we only want you know, groups of 10. If there's 11 items on your list, it doesn't come in. But if there's 10, it does. The star args means it doesn't matter. It's arbitrary. You can have 50, you can have three. And then the star star quarks is very similar, but the star star is like for a dictionary, which would be a key and a value. So this is just a way to think of like the arbitrary steps that we were talking about taking before, like five steps or 20 steps. This is just saying, oh yeah, it doesn't matter how many steps, as long as there's steps, bring them in. So before we close out this lesson, let's do a quick summary of the mnemonics that we just learned and the concepts that they represent. Now, our first mnemonic was a gas pump, and it represented the topic of a function. We learned that functions are a structure that contains a block of code. We learned that functions are arguably the most important concept in computer science. They're important because they help us generalize code. They let us contain code. They let us abstract code. This allows Python to become like building blocks. And then we talked about the importance of open source programming and how world changing the concept really is. And then we learned the mnemonic from Doctor Who of the TARDIS, the famous phone booth, and it represented calling, in our case, calling a function. We learned that when we call a function, we're asking the function to execute the logic that's stored inside of it. We talked about how we can optionally pass in an argument or have it return to us a variable. And then we learned the mnemonic of the Hungry Hungry Hippos board game and how it represents the concept of a parameter. We talked about how parameters can be of all sorts of different types. They're usually variables. And we pass them in when we're calling that go all the way into the function. And then we talked about the difference between parameters and arguments. And then we learned the mnemonic of clogs, two wooden dance shoes. And one of them has a single asterisk on it, and the other one has a double asterisk. And this represents the concept of star args and star star quarks. And we talked about how these kind of are similar to parameters, except they're placeholders. And they allow us to pass in variables of arbitrary length with multiple pockets in them. And that can go in, be executed, and returned just like a normal variable. So now let's pull up our trusty Jupyter Notebook and start looking at examples of these ideas expressed in code. Subscribe to our Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.